You know the story I told you and many people have been talking about, about former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown and Trump telling this story about Willie Brown that doesn't appear to be true and is calling into question, or many people are calling into question, Trump's mental situation, just with a pretty severe uh, memory lapse here. And we have an extra wrinkle now to this story where not only is Willie Brown saying that never happened, Donald, he's dreaming is the quote. And I'll remind you of those moments. But it doesn't seem even Jerry Brown is who Trump was referring to, which we thought originally was the mix-up. Now we have a whole nother character in this story saying, I think Trump's talking about me. I don't know how he's mixing us up, but I think he's talking about me. So we'll get to that. But first, one of the reasons Trump is so triggered, and another thing we're going to get to is him calling up New York Times uh, journalist Maggie Haberman and ranting about this story, why it hits him so close to home, people mocking him over having this mix-up, at least it appears to be mixed up, we could get more information and learn that it wasn't, but is because of moments like this from Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg saying, I think Trump's lost a step. Yeah, I mean, you can just tell that he's lost a step. Uh, you know, he's getting uh, mushier, fuzzier, more confused. You look at this press conference, he uh, declared that he was in a helicopter that went down with Willie Brown on board. He's never even been in a helicopter with Willie Brown. And it, it does raise some real concerns about what's happened to Donald Trump over the years, right? Is this a symptom of something? Is he struggling to maintain a grip on reality or, or to tell the difference between uh, dreams and what is real? Or uh, best case scenario, he's just lying again. Republican. <laughs> right. The two options aren't great. There's a third option, but the first is this is a really wild memory lapse and it happens but adding this to the series of things does start to create a concerning picture or he's just being really dishonest but why he would do that in a way that so, could be so quickly fact-checked i don't know but he has the habit of doing that as well and the third is maybe he'll come out and prove us all wrong and maybe this actually did happen and willie brown is lying that seems less likely but when i say this is a part of a series of moments, memory lapses, and things that are bringing to the forefront, especially now that Biden's not the person he's going up against, but instead, 20 years younger, Vice President Harris, the age concerns. That's a big part of what caused Biden to drop off the ticket, and he had the integrity and the humility to do so. And I think it's fair to say, all right, Trump, you get the same scrutiny because of this Willie Brown nonsense and stuff like this. Never reports the crowd, you know. By the way, they never report the crowd on January 6th. You know, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, you know, they, did you know they destroyed all of the information, all of the evidence, everything, deleted and destroyed all of it, all of it, because of lots of things. Like Nikki Haley is in charge of security. We offered her 10,000 people. Meaning to say Nancy Pelosi and being super dishonest in everything that he was saying there. So again, we're going to get to, there's a lot of context, which is why it's taking a second to get there, but to Trump's call to Maggie Haberman or her recounting it and how triggered he is by this story, by people mocking him for it, and the new character that has come out and said he was actually thinking of me. It's all very strange, but as a reminder of what he said, he said this at the press conference. Please. Yeah. former mayor of San Francisco, and how that might have intersected with her career trajectory. So I'm just wondering if you followed that discussion at all. Well, I know Willie Brown very well. In fact, I went down in a helicopter with him. We thought maybe this is the end. We were in a helicopter going to a certain location together, and there was an emergency landing. This was not a pleasant landing, and Willie was, <laughs> he was a little concerned. So I know, him, I know him pretty well. I mean, I haven't seen him in years. Uh, but he told me terrible things about her. But this is what you're telling me anyway, I guess. But he, he had a big part in what happened with Kamala. But he, he I don't know, maybe he's changed his tune, but he, uh, he was not a fan of hers very much at that. Again, I want to be humble myself, or at least transparent myself, and say, we don't know for sure, for sure, for sure. Trump could end up proving us wrong. I want to add that caveat. 
It's just now we have multiple people who were a part of the story or think they're a part of the story able to confirm this seems to be complete and total nonsense. And with that being said, what we are seeing, if indeed Trump is getting things mixed up or fabricating this story, is the combination of delusion and dishonesty. And that's a really bad cocktail. And another little flashback moment. This was the initial reaction from former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown to Trump saying this. So you were on an helicopter with him that almost crashed? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's your answer, right? Okay. He's I'm dreaming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So fertile. Trump really does not like that. Willie Brown also went on CNN to say this. Um, another thing that Donald Trump said at this news conference was that you had said derogatory things about Vice President Kamala Harris to him in conversation. Have you ever had a conversation like that with Donald Trump? No, I have not. Nor anybody else. It sounds like, at least according to you, this entire story, including the helicopter, the near emergency landing, and the conversation about now Vice President Kamala Harris, it just never happened. Never happened, period. And I think my memory is probably better than his. Oof. Brutal. So with that being said, uh, before seeing Trump's response to all of this, Mediate has this report man in near helicopter crash with trump says former president confusing him for willie brown i guess we all look alike and he's referring to both of them being black men and that might be the confusion for trump oh no they are now uh, there are now three people refuting donald trump's claim that he was in a near helicopter crash with former san francisco mayor willie brown including brown himself by the way, it's interesting to see that at least one part of the story has become sort of true. He was in a helicopter emergency landing with someone completely different than he thought he was in it with. Speaking to reporters on Thursday, Trump recounted the supposed nearly uh, near death tale of him and Brown. But Nate Holden, a former Los Angeles city councilman and state senator, told Politico on Friday that the former president is mixing up two black men because he was the one in the helicopter with Trump. Quote, Willie is the short black guy living in San Francisco. He said, I'm a tall black guy living in Los Angeles according to Trump's version of events, and it goes through what we already watched. Holden told Politico that the helicopter event happened around 1990 when Trump was looking to build property in Los Angeles while flying to Atlantic City. The two pilots told their passengers that some equipment was done and they'd need to make an emergency landing. This is why Holden thinks it was actually him. It would be strange for Trump to have been in two emergency landings in his life in helicopters, but maybe so. The group, which also included attorney Harvey Friedman, Trump's late brother Robert Trump, and Barbara Rez, a former executive for Trump, eventually made it to New Jersey, which Trump did say in True Social Post, this was a flight to New Jersey, with some heavy turbulence. Talks about Rez also writing about this in uh, their book, Brown himself, has denied Trump's version of events. Obviously, the Trump campaign is saying Trump wrote about this story before in his book in 2023. Well, he seems to have been confused about this for some time then, but still we haven't had the story substantiated. Now three people are, are refuting it, as has been mentioned, and then it goes through what we've already seen. Holden suggested Trump either mixed it up or completely made it up when it comes to the near-death experience. This was just too big to overlook. This is a big one. Conflating Willie Brown and me, the press is searching for the real story and they didn't get it. And Trump, I told you, was out saying two failing New York Times reporters questioned my story and he ranted about this. We read that yesterday, but very unhappy that this is being questioned. We are getting so close to one of the most important elections in history. If you appreciate the work that's being done in this important political moment from this show and you want to support it in an easy, free way, you can do so by clicking the subscribe button. Thank you so much. Back to the video. And with that being said, here is Maggie Haberman of the New York Times talking about what Trump said in a phone call to her about this. 20th on like the moments from yesterday's news conference, but but why is if he that, angry I mean, about this and why is he calling you about it? So uh, 
the phone call was actually on another topic, and then in the middle of it, he started uh, railing about this story because the New York Times and other publications wrote about the fact that Willie Brown, as you know, said it on CNN too, says this did not happen. Trump got asked about Willie Brown, and he brought up this helicopter story. And what I learned today is that Trump put this story in his 2023 book, Letters to Trump. One of the letters he included was from Willie Brown. They knew each other in the 1990s, and he referenced this alleged helicopter emergency landing. Fine, I, nobody noticed it at the time. Um, his issue is with Willie Brown, who is saying that this didn't happen. But in the middle of it, he said that he has, in the middle of this phone conversation, he said he has, they found the records and it landed in a field and you know indicated that he was gonna release them. And I said that I would love to see them, and he made fun of me asking that in a sort of child sing-song voice and then said he was probably going to sue. He said you, I didn't write the story, but I assume he meant the paper for writing about this. You know, if he has records, he should show them what I thought was. Of course. You know, it's wild to go to suing before going to releasing records that would disprove people. And also it's, it's interesting how much the right talks about them being the ones that are warriors for freedom of speech, but they do this sort of stuff all the time. They're perfectly fine when Trump threatens outlets because they do reporting he doesn't like or uh, uh, tries to to scare them into not reporting again in ways that he doesn't find advantageous, especially when the reporting being done here is them saying, hey, this is what Willie Brown is saying. This is what Trump is saying. How could you say that was defamation or anything else? They're accurately reporting on the story thus far. They're not inventing a new, well, we believe the actual truth. They're just giving the information that we know right now. And let's be honest, it does seem Trump is super confused. And the fact that he wrote about this in a book in 2023, to me, indicates he's not just being dishonest in the moment at that press conference, but really in his brain, mushed together, Willie Brown. And uh, the other individual that has spoken out, which, of course, I'm not forgetting his name. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about Trump's memory. Nate Holden, a former Los Angeles city councilman and state senator. So he must have authentically those two individuals or switched them around or something in his head, maybe for the reason Holden is assuming. And that is a little bit embarrassing. But again, it happens It's just very interesting to see how much this is a sensitive spot for Trump, how much of an insecurity this is. And I think it's because he knows for the same reason that at his rallies, he spends so much time at every rally saying, I'm not in cognitive decline. I'm not. I promise. I did a cognitive test. It was great. I aced it. No one's ever aced it like I aced the cognitive test, the dementia screening test is because he understands this is something people should be concerned about. There is there, there. And... That's why he's freaking out so much at the New York Times. Let me know what you thought of all of that in the comments. If you want to get extra content daily, you can do so by clicking the join button below.